Uh, there you go. Ay, 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 ay. How you doing, y'all? Matt, Matt's a beer's back with a beer mail box. And we got a box right here of beer from my boy Brian from Time and Materials Brewing. Um, that's right. If you were to watch previous unboxings from Brian, you would notice a difference in the title. One said, um, pseudo homebrew, homebrew unboxing. Well, he's not homebrew anymore. He's a pro brewer. He actually makes beer and it goes out in the world and people buy it and they drink it. It's pretty cool to follow somebody and drink their beer along the lines to where they actually go through, you know, the homebrewing process to become pro. And it is very, very cool. Charles B. chiming in saying, hi, what's going on? I apologize for the tardiness. Um, my internet here is finagled in every which way. Basically, for those that don't know, it's like I have I have no option for internet. Where Well, that's a lie. I have one option for internet where I live traditionally, which is DSL in a max of three megabytes down and half a megabyte up. So that is what this household had when I arrived here. Um, and it's because of my wife's farm. So I moved down here. And I ended up finagling because that was the only option. I ended up finagling. I actually have a LTE router <laughs> like on a pole outside of my house up so it can get and latch onto an LTE signal. And that's how I've been usually kind of piping my internet in here for about the better of two and a half, three years. And uh, sometimes it goes a little wonky. It still works, but then it gets really kind of um, latency goes crazy and I got to kind of reset it. And uh, that's what I had to do. I tried to go live here and it just wasn't going. So I had to go do the whole reset crap all while. But I will say this. I am beyond excited to actually have real internet. <laughs> like I am, I am Mr. Kind of don't talk to me. I just want to ignore things and, 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 and just exist by myself in my little farm here with my family. Um, but they've been trying to get like real internet in the township that I live in. I live in New Jersey. It's not like I live in Wyoming or some shit. Um, and, uh, and, uh, they had a, they had a town meeting, town hall meeting, zoom meeting. And I, and I entered and joined that shit like last week, a week and a half ago. And basically what the town hall meeting was, I want to vent about this cause I want people to join and do the unboxing stuff, but I'm going to vent about this real quick. So if you don't want to hear this, then it sucks for you. Um, so they did this town hall meeting and they basically got three representatives from Optimum. That's Optimum Maltese is the company that is bringing all the stuff in. And it was like 20 people from the township all in there. And all they wanted to do was a bitch about how they don't have internet. And these like three representatives from Optimum were literally coming there like human beings. Because if you deal with companies, you know how hard it is to deal with actual humans. Humans are like, I'm here to help your problems. I'm going to take down your name. I'm going to take down your phone number. I'm going to take down your address. And I'm going to figure out why you don't have internet. Because some people have it, some people don't. That was the issue. And we don't have it. And, um, and he's like, I'm going to address each and every one of your problems individually so we can figure out you're going to get three answers from us. Either you can have it, either you could, one, you could have it, two, you could have it, but you're going to have to pay a little extra to get it running your house, or three, you can't have it. Those are the options we're going to figure out for you and give you an answer. And they talk to everybody, like, and they would start, and they'd be like, okay, let me go to this person over here. Let's talk to you. And the person would be like, okay, well, I got to tell you something. And all they do is bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch. And it was the worst experience of my life. One of the worst experiences of my life. And it was like after 40 minutes and I only went through two people. I was like, listen, I was like, I, you guys don't know me, but I got family and stuff. I want to hang out with my kid. Let's just get them this info they want. Anyway, I got a call today saying, hey, in June, June 6th or 9th, one of those days you can have regular internet. Now, it's not going to even be like awesome internet like everybody else. It's not going to be like gig. It's going to be like 300 down and 20 up. Fine by me. Fine by me. So I'll be able to do this a little bit better. Anyway, that was my gripe. Um, Charles B says, my favorite videos of yours are stouts, porters, and barrel-aged versions of those drinks. I enjoy those, too. Um, I just did one right before I came on here. Um, uh, and, uh, Ryan, what's going on? Hello, you fine gentlemen. I was going to reach out today, but Gore got crazy. How's it going? Going good, man. Um, Ryan was helping me with a lot of, um, server issues I was having at my new job. Uh, you haven't heard from me because I kind of powered through it. I actually ended up kind of backtracking to square one again and try rejoining the server. I brought the server to the old location and joined the main and elevated everything and transferred all the roles and all that shit. So I'm kind of chugging along. Basically, the server's up at the new location. 
Um, but I'm using a VPN just to kind of keep them connected um, until I can bring everything down. So I have all kinds of questions to ask, but I just wanted to, I got over a hurdle to where I could take a breather and I'm taking a breather. So I appreciate all the help, brother. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so yeah, there you go. Look at that. We go from internet at home to internet work. It's all about the internet. So we're going to do an unboxing. I don't want to bogart on time and materials uh, beer mail here. Like I said, I'm expecting there to be a four pack of jammers in this sucker. Like I said, um, Brian was a homebrew trying to make good, sent me awesome canned beers um, at, over his uh, stint as an official homebrew. But now he is making beer, putting it out in this world. It's on draft at places. It's, cans are for sale all over the place. And he's just like... I gotta send you legit cans now. Um, I'll tell you what. Anybody out there, you want the best scissors in your life? Buy these. I, I, these are the sharpest fucking scissors in the history of mankind. To the point where I forgot I was using them. I almost cut my finger. Like they're so goddamn sharp. These things worth the way to go. Let's put it this way. We have these at work. I love them so much. I went and bought a pair. Anyway, ooh, we got good gift going on here. Um, okay, Ryan says i'm here to help uh, happy, i'm here my man happy to help and charles b says what's your favorite bottle opener you have my favorite one is this one it's just a wine key you know traditional wine key i like that it has the wax cutter on it um i like that it has the one you know the corkscrew bottle opener but the reason i love this the most and i'll try not to to be too long-winded on this is that there's a brewery from italy called biera 32 so b e b i e R R E three two I believe is how it's spelled, and it was one of the first um, breweries ever to reach out to me, um, and they because I got a bunch of the beer and it was mad old, and there was a cork in it, and I was like, but there was this like screw in a thing, and I'm like, it's just kind of like a makeshift kind of your own cork screw. I'm like, not quite sure how this works. It comes on every bottle, and I was like, whatever, it is what it is. Reviewed the beers, they're okay, and they saw it, and they were like, hey, just so you know. We saw your reviews. Um, uh, saw your reviews, and the um, and and he actually chimes in. He's like, "I thought you were gonna say your battle axe opener." I, that's my second favorite one. <laughs> the reason, the only reason why this one trumps it, and, and and the reason why is sentimental value, is that when they sent me the beers, and then I did, I said mention the thing again about I don't know why this screw and this is that. And then the uh, the owner of the company, he wrote me, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's like, it's in Italian, you can't read it. It's actually the screw, you screw into the cork, and then it acts as a keychain. So you have a keychain. He's like, but I noticed you don't have a bottle opener, so I'll send you a bottle opener. So some dude from Italy sent me, like, their, his wine key. Like, it was, it's not like, it wasn't brand new. They didn't buy it. You can tell it's worn and old, and, and it's kind of, someone used it for a real long time. So <laughs> a brewery owner from Italy is like, you don't have a bottle opener. I'll send you one. And that's why I like this one. Though. Anyway, so, um, let's see. What do we have here? Four cans. Um, Clayton's up in this piece. What's going on, homie? Man, Cot's growing hard and fast. Let's see what uh, the old Brian sent me. First up, we have Winter Morning Saison. This is a uh, Time Materials is a family owned brewery, Nano Brewery, and Reading Mass. No dates. Oh, no. Handwritten dates, even better. Uh, so this is a 4.9% ABV. Um, 219 it was canned. It's winter morning season. It's kind of interesting. One, uh, the labels have this little cutout here. I don't know. I think that's just for printing or application purposes, but I kind of like it. Um, and I think he did something really smart because he's doing small nano batch stuff here. So instead of just printing a blank label on a beer... And then putting stickers on it, what he did was, I'm probably going to make this beer a couple times. So let me pin, uh, uh, print labels that have the ABV and canned on date on it. And then when I do, I can reuse the labels in perpetuity so they're not, like, dated. Smart move. Smart move. So there you go. Let me some Saison. Uh, next up we have um, Good Vibes Only, Fruited Sour. You know, a little dragon fruit on there, a little coconut, a little pineapple. And... See, in a, um, 
he doesn't go into the actual ingredients, which is kind of interesting too, because it leaves a label open for interpretation. 217, and then we have a ABV of six and change. I really do like the labels though, man. Very much, very much. Um, barrel aged stout, okay, here we go. Um, this is a barely shall age in Mad River Distillers bourbon whiskey barrels. Nice. Hmm. 12% ABV can 213. Look at the labels, brother. Come a long way. Come a long way. That was my critique of his labels at the beginning. Um, that's a cool photo. Locally grown, locally brewed. It's just like watching. I say this, but whatever. It's like watching your kids grow up. You know, when you drink somebody's homebrew and then eventually you become a pro brewer, it's cool. You know, and it says time honored local remedy, New England IPA. This is an ABV 6.8%, and it is canned on 0208. And this was in collab with. Hypothecary Ales, the cur for that ales, yeah. I remember him posting about this on his Instagram and mentioning it, so yeah. Time Materials Brewing. Go check them out. Very cool stuff. I like this. I like the labels, man. I like the little lineup here. You know what I mean? Very cool. It's from Saison, Fruited Sour, Barrel Age Jams, little hazies up in this piece. Very cool. We have one other thing. Send me a shirt. I'm super pumped about because I'll wear it. Oh, nice. That's a that's a cool shirt too. I'll let y'all on a secret, and it's the material I like. Oh, it's the, that's funny. It's actually the same shirt material. A couple of breweries I've used before, and this is one of my favorites. That like super soft. I hate t-shirts with logos on the back. This is the front. I hate t-shirts with logos on the back. And, like, nothing on the front or just a little thing off to the side. Can't stand that stuff. Can't stand it. So, it has back here a little stuff in the back. But that's fine by me. I'm symmetry kind of guy. I like that nice big logo on the front. This this, this, this sucker will be one. This, oh, dude. Look at how long this thing is. This thing, this thing is mad long, too. Ugh. That's the one thing that sucks. I'll let you know a little, uh, little personal frustration this is total like first word problem bullshit is that um i have a really hard time like internally like letting breweries send me t-shirts because <laughs> i'm a stickler for like how they look like i'm not i'm not a stylistic person but i want things to look a certain way I want them to feel a certain way and they have to fit a certain way and the cheaper the shirt you go typically shittier of that happens and a lot of people not cut corners but they don't want to spend the money on the crazy good material so i have a lot of breweries that'll be like you know like i go in their chat room and hang out you know never been there before chatted up oh you're that guy and then they're like oh here take a shirt and stuff i'm like yeah and if i know i hate them i'm like i don't know you make your money on it i don't want to take your stuff sometimes they insist and i'm like I'm like, I'm just going like, to, I don't want to be a dick and be like, I'm just going to throw this in my closet and never wear it. Because it's not that I don't want to wear it. Like, i will be like, happy to wear it. But then it's like, you know, a pocket tee with a logo over here. It's like blight fluorescent orange or something. And there's nothing. I ain't wearing that stuff. I'm wearing black. I'm wearing blue. I'm wearing gray. I'll wear colors if it's done right. So it's one of those things where I'm probably, I, I would say out of all this, I get a lot of brewery t-shirts. Out of all of them I get, I probably wear like 20%. Of them and I feel bad about it because they genuinely be like you keep that and sell that and make money because I am going to not I'm gonna waste it that will not get wasted let's put it that way um yeah we're almost done here it's 9 30 I gotta go play video games or something um actually I gotta do some research she shed stuff she sheds coming along we'll talk about that in a second so took a tour at rev this week oh very cool very, very cool. Um, pretty cool. Got to see the barrels of goodies. Also got to choose an experimental beer they're working on. Um, four choices. Chose the malt liquor. I was intrigued. Fair. Always go malt liquor. When in doubt, go malt liquor. That's what I say, Clayton. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, she shed, dude. 
Yeah. She said, for those who don't know, I'm building an office out in my backyard. I did a little video about me clearing brush. Um, I haven't done a ton since then because the weather has been bad. Like, we hit that day when I cleared brush, it was like 60 and beautiful. We've had snow on and off and ice and shit like that. Um, but a lot has gone on with, like, um, like, like all the ancillary stuff. Like, the shadows are ordered um, to my specs. And um, I ordered a ton of shit. I probably ordered, like, the shed is going to cost, like, a decent amount. And it's actually pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things. But, like, all the prep work and all the other materials, like lumber. Just, like, lumber to build a base for it is, like, 500 bucks. Stone to put inside that base to put the shed on is, like, 400 bucks. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. Um, but I ordered, like, all the cabling for running the sub panel. Um, and all the stuff to build the base, which is really, really exciting. Um, because what I'm going to do is like, we have two different s main panels in our house. We have main panel for the house here and we have main panel in the barn. So the barn has its own electricity. I'm going to tap in off that and rub some panel. I'm going to dig a trench, put it in the ground, run it to the goddamn she shed. And, um, that's like the heavy lifting stuff, stuff that I kind of know. My dad taught me a lot of stuff when I was younger, but I haven't applied it in 30 years. And then, um, and get that shed in here. Once I get it, once I get it it's nice, it's nice and big too. It's a twenty by ten foot Amish shed, like, like one of the little, little, like kind of Amish roofed. So it's like the roof doesn't even really start for like seven feet high, which is really high for a shed. And it's a, high enough to put like a second, like a loft storage area, like a little sleeping area. Anyway, um, you know that'll come in like a month. Yeah. Probably right around a month, if not less than a month. So between now and then, I gotta clear that land. I'm gonna pull some stumps this weekend, um, and start clearing that land. Have someone coming in, kind of flatten out that 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 property, that area. I'm gonna put it and uh, level it, and then um, build that base and stuff like that, and get that gravel in there, kind of make the base for it. And that's when it really kind of comes in. Like once I run that cabling uh, for the sub panel, and the shed comes in, I can wire it up. Once I get electricity in it, it's like humming humming from there drywall and painting and running electric running internet and the whole nine so it's gonna be really cool really exciting kind of kind of future you know not just for the beer channel because it's for me too it's my home office home theater um kind of mixed together this becomes micah's room so he's growing older he's becoming cooler he's doing awesome things he's getting super mobile uh, not walking yet but he can get from point a to point b way too fast and it's just such a cool time to be alive, man. You know, with all the uncertainty going on with Russia uh, uh, announcing war against Ukraine and being as heinous as they are, it's like un uncertain times and uncertain things are happening. But personally, I I'm in a good place, except for my hip, which I'm old and I slipped on ice at work and it hurt my hip. Like when I say I slipped on ice at work and it hurt my hip, I slipped, my foot moved this far. Like I was on, I was walking on a ice and my foot just slipped like that and that caused my hip to hurt like i didn't fall i didn't nothing tragic happen to me i just kind of like <laughs> and then my now my hips like oh what's wrong with my hip oh anyway um but yeah man um yeah yeah oh clayton okay oh first things first charles is like how fast can you chug a beer not fast at all i suck at chugging beer so no, I can't do that shit. Uh, it says, need more updates? Have a kid if you're comfortable. Took mine 16 months old to the park for the first time in like five months because of the weather. Came home and just kept trying to trying to open the door and wanted to go outside. Yeah, no, it's been, we've been lucky with a little bit of weather up here. He's cool. He's hitting all his marks as far as, um, you know, timeline and, and, and stuff he's doing. He's a little behind. He doesn't say mama, dad. He's going to be a, a year old on St. Patrick's Day, so in about three weeks. Uh, a little less than three weeks, a little longer than two weeks. He'll be, um, he'll be uh, a year old. He's not seeing mom, mom, dad, dad yet, which is kind of upsetting to me. You know, sometimes it takes kids a little bit longer. He says mom, mom, dad, dad. He just doesn't say mom, mom, dad, dad to us. Like when he wants something, he says mama, and he wants when he's happy, he says dad, dad. So <laughs> regardless of what's, wh who's around, you know, if he's happy, he's like dad, 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 dad. And then if he wants something, he goes mom, mom, mom. Is very excited about that. Um, but he's getting close. He's not walking uh, yet, but he's up. He can, like, climb up on a couch from, like, the ground up into the top of the couch. So he's got, you know, he can climb, and um, and he can move around and hold on to stuff and go wherever he wants and crawl like a maniac. 
not walking yet, but then that we didn't expect him to walk a little bit later than most kids. I mean, it's, all, it's not even a year yet, so I'm being a little bit kind of jumping the gun here, but he's going to be a big kid. He's in, nine, he's in the 99th percentile in height and weight, so tall, big kids walk later. Um, but other than that, man, he's like a champion. He'll eat anything you give him. He just like whatever at first were typical parents all hesitant to be like, do I should I give this to him? I don't know. Now we're just like, I'm eating something. I'm like, here, you want some of this? Blah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He eats it. Obviously, I get him big chunks of stuff. Um, but man, man, he loves yogurt. That's his thing. His favorite thing in the world is yogurt. He can't. Like nothing else is better. Like he loves a bunch of stuff. But once I if I get a yogurt, a baby yogurt container out, I show it to him. He just starts to like. He pays all the attention in the world, and he's like, I want the yogurt, you know? So, and we can't shovel it in his mouth um, fast enough. Uh, nah. Yeah, okay. Um, and he says uh, about me updating what he did. That's awesome. And he's like, yeah, he's like, mine's a little slow in speech as well. Mine's 99% as well. I'm 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, I'm only 6 and change, um, but my wife is 6'1", but her brother, her brother is 6'8", her dad is 6 six eight or ten and her uncle is six eight or ten like all the men in her family like her her uncle like her cousin uh, uh, uh her uncle's kids are all like six nine six ten and shit like that so this is gonna be a gigantic human so mm. and everybody in my family male wise is six foot or taller i think i might be a sh no i'm taller than my brother doug he's six even i'm six and change like not one <clears throat> and then um oh damn 16 months 38 inches holy poop of maroon that's a big kid <laughs> yeah ours is uh ours is uh whatever uh just is gonna be a year like i said and on the 17th and he's he's at 30 now so i, I forgot to wait we just waited him the other day but anyway yeah i think that's my cue to leave like i said i'm gonna go do some research, look up some tea shed stuff, um, and figure out what's going on. Thank you very much, Brian, for sending these off again. Very excited to dive into the time materials. Like I said, go check them out uh, on the old uh, Instagrams and all that stuff. Uh, time materials brewing. Um, you can get their stuff predominantly in Mass. I don't believe they do anything outside of Massachusetts. Um, uh, I don't believe, but obviously go to their Instagram. They'll let you know they're in a bunch of different places now, and uh, good stuff, man. Absolutely good stuff. Nano Brewery. Love loved, loved the small old school stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Thanks for keeping me uh, keeping me company, y'all. Hopefully uh, you enjoy me reviewing these suckers and we'll see you we'll see you again in the future.